Hello, true believers. This is John Krupa here. And this is the freedom to draw unsolved mysteries. This is an edition, an unexplained death edition of our channel, our show. John Krupa, host of the freedom to draw unsolved mysteries. Today's unexplained death case is that of Franklin Romine and Sharon Pryor and this is an unexplained death almost 50 years ago in 1975 it has been a cold case for almost 50 years but they are on the verge of solving this the mystery of this case is did this man actually kill this young girl? There seems to be some doubt, but not much. This case is on its way to being solved, but it's still, to this day, an unsolved mystery, guys. If you have any tips, you too could help solve a mystery. Contact these places here any case that we do on this show you need to contact these places if you have any tips contact these places I cannot do anything with them if you contact me about them I'm not a police officer I'm just an artist so you need to contact these places and they will tell you where to go with your information we are merely just the truth tellers John Krupa, Freedom to Draw, Unsolved Mysteries, is about to go down. A couple of seconds, guys. All right, so we're going to tell you about this case, and we're going to draw it at the same time. And today is National Christina Day, so if your name is Christina or you know a Christina, yeah, you know, give, give them some props today and say what's up, say hi. It is National Christina Day, so we have Christina Aguilera on in the background. Instrumental music. This man's body exhumed after Canadian authorities believed he raped and killed a teen in 1975. This happened in Putnam County, West Virginia. Uh, where this story is being reported out of. Uh, the, the murder happened in Quebec. A nearly a half-century mystery in the murder and rape of a teenager in Canada appears to have been solved almost 900 miles away, buried in West Virginia Cemetery. The, the body of Franklin Romine was exhumed Tuesday at a rural cemetery in Fraser's Bottom after DNA evidence linked him to the death of a 16-year-old Sharon Pryor. On March 29, 1975, the teen left her home in Point St. Charles, a neighborhood in Montreal, Quebec, to meet her friends at a nearby pizza parlor and she never made it to that pizza parlor. Three days later, her partially nude body was found in a field in La Guayale, Quebec, about 15 miles from where she was kidnapped. There is strong evidence to believe that this man did it. Police in Longueo said she had been raped and beaten to death. And she was lying on her back in the snow 
and her pants had been removed. Police said her underwear was found hanging from a nearby tree. Investigators said white tape, which they believe was used to restrain her, was stuck in her hair and on her wrist. A blue t-shirt also had been used to restrain her. An autopsy report concluded that she died of asphyxiation and from numerous facial fractures. The case would eventually turn into one of Canada's most high-profile cases that saw more than a hundred suspects investigated, but never any arrests. Now, through DNA evidence from the scene, it has linked a West Virginia man dead for 40 years to the crime. As we listen to instrumental by Christina Aguilera, today is National Christina Day. If you know a Christina, give her some props. Too bad it's not Sharon, National Sharon Day. Uh, that would have been very poetic, I guess. This victim's name is Sharon Pryor, and the supposed perpetrator of this crime is named Franklin Romine. There is some doubt to whether he did this crime or not. We will elaborate that on that in a couple of minutes here. It's a combination of the most evil element in the human race contacting the most innocent element in the human race, a child, Putnam County Prosecuting Attorney Mark Sorsea said. The case has haunted Lungueal for nearly 50 years. Some things are worse than death. Losing a child like that for a family, for a mom, to know that your child died in that way, Sorsea said. Pryor's mother, Yvonne, who is 85, still lives in Canada. She, along with Sharon's surviving three siblings, have made it their life's mission to get justice for Sharon and find Sharon's killer.
Putnam County prosecutor had never heard of this case that had taken place so long ago until he got a call recently that Canadian cold case detectives believed Pryor's killer was buried not far from where Cersea had grown up. He didn't hesitate to tell them he would do whatever he could to help close this case. There's a family, a guy killed and raped a girl. We're going to help our friends in Canada. We're going to be on the team and we're going to get it done. He said, I don't care if it's 50 years old or three months old. When they called us, we were ready to go. I guess that's just the DNA of law enforcement. In March, Cersea filed a petition for exhumation in Putnam County Circuit Court to find out if the man buried at the Pine Grove Cemetery could really be the man who had raped and killed that girl. What's amazing about the case is we found this guy and he probably never gave a DNA sample in his life, Sorsea said. I was just absolutely fascinated about how DNA can be used as a tool to find someone on a crime that happened more than 40 years ago. When you don't even have a DNA sample from the person that did it. During the decades of countless tips Suspects in interviews, Languel police, police said Romine's name had never come up in the investigation until last year. A DNA profile removed from the blue t-shirt used to restrain Pryor and a sample from her pants and underwear made it possible to target the last name of this suspect. Then they got the name of Romine, so they just started looking at criminal rep records, Sorsea said. Well, they see this guy has been very active in Canada and Montreal in the 70s with violent activity in and out of jail. Then they started looking at the West Virginia criminal records, and then they see that he beat and raped a girl in Parkersburg, and he got convicted of that. Born in Huntington in 1946, Romine had a criminal record that started when he was a child. By 64, when he was 18, he had made his first attempt at escape from a West Virginia penitentiary according to law enforcement records provided by WCHS. As we listen to Christina Aguilera, on this National Christina Day. You're welcome for fans of Christina.
Roman had been in and out of jail before. His next escape from prison was in 67. Two years later, he would start committing crimes in Canada. And this was a beautiful blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl uh, who Christina Aguilera is. She's a beautiful blonde-haired, blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl. Who knows? This could, girl could have been a 1980s Christina Aguilera. You could track his location by his arrest. I mean, he's always getting in trouble. You could say this date. He's in West Virginia, this date he's in Canada, and then this date in West Virginia. So say I said, we have a window. We can tell when he was incarcerated and when he was on the street. He's probably incarcerated half of the time. Then he would be on the street, and then he would go back to jail. A recidivist. And 74 deputies in Wood County said he broke into a house and raped a woman in Parkersburg. An Associated Press report said he was released on a $2,500 bond two months later and fled to Canada prior was raped and killed a year later. Canadian border officials captured him in August 75 and turned him over to the FBI according to published reports. He was extradited back to West Virginia in January 76 to face the Wood County charges. He was initially convicted during trial for rape and burglary, but the West Virginia Supreme Court reversed the conviction and awarded him a new trial. In April 81, however, Romine pleaded guilty to second-degree sexual assault in exchange for the burglary charge to be dismissed. He was sentenced to 5 to 10 years in prison, but released soon after with credit for time served. By 82, he was back in Canada, where he died in Verdun, Montreal at the age of 36. How he died is a mystery. 
So that's another mystery in this case, guys. Detectives have not been able to find a death certificate, but have said they believe his death was violent. Romine's body was returned to his mother in West Virginia, where his family, due to what they say were fin finances and tradition, dug his grave at the Pine Grove Cemetery. But was the case that started in Canada enough to persuade a judge in West Virginia to allow the extraordinary step that to resume to exhume Romine's body and prove once and for all that he was the killer. And that's where we stand with this case now. We can speculate all day on it, but we won't know the answer until we open the grave to see the remains, he told the judge during the hearing on April 6th. So they did all the court proceedings and everything and all that. And they got the green light to exhume this guy's body. And we are currently waiting on the DNA to come back. So, a lot of mysteries in this case. How did this man die? Did he die a death that was uh, deserving of what he supposedly committed? while he was alive did he get karmic retribution for his death being a violent one but we kind of want to know how he died because we want to know if he got his just desserts so we will we're going to keep you guys abreast on this case as soon as I hear something, I will pin an update on the comment section of this video. So stay tuned to this video. I think all you have to do is to look at the comments and open the video again and read the comments. And then you'll be able to see um, what happened with this case. Definitely not a boring case. It's an interesting case, to say the least. But we're about to wrap this one up, guys. This is the unexplained death of Sharon Pryor, guys. And like I said, we... The investigators are on their way to solving this, so hopefully this will be a solved mystery when we next see you guys. True Believers, peace out as we listen to Christina. She'll take us out of this National Christina Day. Peace out. This is John Krupa from... The freedom to draw unsolved mysteries, guys. Krupa, out.